Hello, hello, and welcome back to Seek the Joy podcast. Happy Seek the Joy Tuesday. I'm your host, Sydney Weiss, and today we are celebrating three years of Seek the Joy podcast. And you can't see me, but I'm currently smiling like ear to ear because it feels a little surreal. I'm not going to lie. It feels a little surreal to be sitting here recording our three-year anniversary episode because when I sat down to publish our very first episode back in October 2017, I really had no idea what I was doing, but I also really had no idea where the show would go and, and what it would evolve into. The podcast is really inspired by our ongoing journey towards growth and empowerment and self-love. And personally, I find it pretty cool that in the last three years, we have been on this journey together. I have found to really get to this space of empowerment, to really begin to choose your own self-love is a journey in trust. And it's a journey in believing in yourself. And it's a journey in choosing your joy. And throughout all of that, allowing yourself to grow But to allow yourself to grow, you have to push yourself. You have to do things you never thought you would. You have to push past that comfort zone that we all create for ourselves. And through the podcast, I have totally done that. But you have also done that too by hitting play, by listening to the episodes. It is just, it kind of blows my mind. The last three years have really changed me. And I think a really awesome, beautiful, profound way. I'm really grateful that I took a chance and that I hit record and then hit publish on this podcast three years ago. Over the weekend, we had our Zoom celebration party for the podcast. And what really struck me about the conversation that we had as a community, as a group, well, there are three things that really struck me. And the first is the impact of vulnerability. We talk about vulnerability a lot on this podcast, probably because it's been such a huge theme in my own life, choosing to be vulnerable, opening up, sharing about my experiences and challenges, but also moments in celebration and joy has not only been incredibly healing for me, but it's allowed me to to grow, grow not only as a person, but grow in my compassion and grow in my empathy. And I would say probably grow in my joy too. What strikes me so much about the impact of vulnerability is not only the impact it has on you, but also the impact that it has on somebody else, whether that be the person that you're talking to and sharing that moment with, or someone that is listening to you on a podcast or reads your blog post or your your Instagram caption, whatever it might be, you you truly never know just how far reaching that one moment in courage will really have. And so I'm really grateful to every single person, not only who has come on the podcast, but who has listened to the podcast, because I also think it takes an insane amount of courage and vulnerability to listen to episodes and listen to conversations that explore that level of vulnerability, that explore that level of being honest about how you're feeling and being truthful about what it is that you're experiencing. And so I think it's really cool that we can come together around shared experiences and talk about what it is that is going on not only in our lives, but also in the world and know that that moment of vulnerability is going to have an impact, whether we see it now or later, whether we know the impact or not, just knowing that choosing that vulnerability for yourself is healing. It, it's pretty cool. Something else that's really struck me in the last three years, but probably more so in the last eight months is the role of our joy, the role of joy in moments of difficulty and struggle and discomfort. And my mom asked me a really interesting question during our Zoom party. She asked me, well, first she asked, 
where would I like to see the show go? Which I think is a great question and something I think about all the time. But she also asked, do I think there's still joy to be found in this moment, in the middle of a global pandemic and in the United States, a crazy election and everything else in between that we are experiencing? And honestly, I, I think there still is joy. It can feel harder to find the joy. It can feel more difficult and sticky to seek your joy and experience your joy. But I I think it's still there. For me, it's about looking for and seeking and finding that joy in your life. What makes you happy? What fills you up? What allows you to keep going? And holding on to those feelings and holding on to that moment while still really remaining connected to what's going on in the world. I think sometimes we think about joy or positivity or happiness or anything in between. We think about it as something that we need to keep very like distinct or separate from like the real world, from the reality of what's going on. And I actually think it's about finding and figuring out for yourself how you can bring the two together to bring joy into these difficult moments while still remaining plugged in and aware of what's going on. And then thinking about the role that you want to play in in this moment. I think we underestimate the role of our joy and the role of our passion. Because if you can tune in and plug into what brings you joy and be sort of like an expression of that joy, an expression of your passion, you on your own can have such a large impact. I think especially right now, so many of us are wondering what can we do? Like what can I do to have a positive impact on my world and the greater world? And the first thing that always comes to mind for me is you have an impact by expressing your joy and by expressing your passion because you can help us move through this time by just being yourself. There's nothing more that you have to do other than tune in to your passion and your joy and express it. Because honestly, that expression is contagious. It will catch on and it will spread. And then someone else will be inspired to share their joy and their passion and sort of let it be who they are. And it is totally a domino effect. But I think it's the kind of domino effect that we really want to see right now. So... When I think about the direction of the podcast moving into year four, this is really what I hope and I want it to be, continuing to have inspiring and impactful and powerful conversations that are uplifting and full of joy, but also talk about and reflect on who we are and what it is that we are experiencing. The last sort of takeaway that I have from three years of Seek the Joy podcast is just how important it is to celebrate you, celebrate your success, celebrate your joy, but also celebrate moments of difficulty. And I know that might sound kind of weird, like why would I celebrate a difficult moment in my life? Why would I celebrate struggle? Why would I celebrate adversity? I say celebrate every moment everything that you go through because those moments of adversity and struggle and difficulty will shape you. They will help mold you into the person that you are and into the person that you are meant to be. Without adversity, without struggle, without difficulty, you would not really know just how much you're capable of. But I like to always flip that on its head too and say, without joy, without celebration, without moments where you are celebrating you, You also don't truly know what you're capable of. So be proud of who you are. Be proud of what you've accomplished. Be proud of what you've overcome. And be proud of what you have allowed yourself to celebrate. All within that too. So I am so excited, truly, to dive in to year four of Seek the Joy podcast. Seriously, thank you for the last three years. Thank you for being here, for listening, for sharing the show, for being on the podcast. Thank you for all of the growth. Thank you for everything that you have taught me. I have learned 
I learned so much in the last three years. And, and thank you for being on this journey with me. I know it's a podcast and you're hitting play every week on a show, but I can't tell you just how much it means to me that you're here and that you tune in and that you email me and we get to know one another. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for, for all of it because without you on this journey with me, I, I really don't know where the podcast would be. So before we officially dive in to year four of Seek the Joy podcast, I want to share a couple of cool statistics with you. The first is, in the last three years, we've published 167 episodes. This is episode 168. I cannot believe it. That's a huge number. Out of those 167 episodes, we've shared 102 conversations. I've sat down with over 100 incredible people for this podcast, and it truly blows my mind. I have featured over 187 people on Joy Corner, and Joy Corner is the blog on our website that I started, I think, towards the end of the first year, or beginning of the second year, actually, of the podcast, and I have loved featuring two people every week on the blog, sharing who they are and their passions and what brings them joy and what inspires them, and I have learned so much about so many incredible people through this blog. Okay. In the last two and a half years, I have featured over 118 people on the power of storytelling. That is huge. That blows my mind because that means over 118 people have come on the podcast and shared who they are and shared their story and their joy and their passion and what inspires them and their biggest dreams, all of this uninterrupted. And the power of storytelling has been hugely inspiring to me. Back in May, I decided it was time to move the power of storytelling over to its own podcast, Stories of Inspiring Joy. And so twice a week on that podcast, I've been releasing beautiful stories, both those who have been on the power of storytelling and those that are completely new stories. And it's so beautiful. I think now more than ever in a time where maybe that sense of connection has been lost, it has been so beautiful to bring people together through shared experiences and our stories because, and I know I say this all the time, but we all have a story that is meant to be shared and a voice that is meant to be heard. And so the power of storytelling has been hugely inspiring to me and has been so beautiful to be part of and to create. And so in December, at the end of the year, the power of storytelling will officially retire on Seek the Joy podcast and be totally on stories of inspiring joy. So I'll make sure to link that for you guys if I haven't already. This year is kind of a blur, but I think I told you about it. I think I did. Back in January of 2020, which by the way, feels like a lifetime ago, I launched a new series on the podcast called Lessons In. And this series really focuses on the lessons in our lives and what they've taught us. And it has been so much fun really for me to sit down and have these conversations and hugely inspiring too. And so far we have shared 10 lessons in conversations with so many more to come through the end of the year and beyond. And I'm excited to continue to share conversations like those that really talk about these shared lessons in our lives and how we can really find joy really through it all. I know I said this like five minutes ago, <laughs> but really, I, I don't know where the podcast would be without you, without you tuning in, without your feedback, with, without your love and your support. And I, I can't thank you enough for, for being here and being on this journey with me. I'm really excited for year four. There's so much to come. I feel like in a lot of ways, Seek the Joy podcast is just getting started. So in year four, here is to powerful storytelling. Here is to powerful conversations that continue to inspire us and empower us to really doing the work to uplifting one another's voices and choosing unapologetically, sometimes with fear, but regardless, choosing to step into our vulnerability and our courage, really all to seek our joy and to uplift ourselves and uplift others and bring a little light and levity back into our world. So year four, I'm ready for it. I'm excited. I, 
it's going to be good. I feel like we're just, we're just getting started. I would love for you guys to join the celebration. Join me in celebrating three years of Seek the Joy podcast. Make sure to enter our three-year anniversary giveaway that went live on all of our social media channels yesterday. And I would love to hear from you. What has been your favorite episode of Seek the Joy podcast? What has the impact of vulnerability been like on your own life? And how are you seeking joy right now? What is that looking like for you? I just would love to hear from you. I would love to connect and celebrate together. So make sure to join the conversation on our social media channels. We are at Seek the Joy Podcast everywhere. Send me an email, sydney at seekthejoypodcast.com. What else? Uh, If you're on Spotify, hit follow. If you're on Apple Podcasts, hit subscribe. And while you're there, I would be so grateful if you haven't already, if you would leave us a five-star rating and review. It really helps the podcast get seen by new people. Share with them what the podcast is all about. And our three-year anniversary celebration, I think, is the perfect time to do that. All right, that's it. How do I wrap this up? How do I how do I say goodbye? I just want to keep going. But seriously, thank you guys so much. This has meant so much to me to be able... Oh, my voice is cracking. It has meant so much for me to be able to sit down and have these conversations and just share these moments in joy and share who we are and come together around shared experiences. And I, I can't thank you enough for being part of it. So I will see you back here next week for our first Seek the Joy Tuesday officially of year four of the podcast. Okay, that's it. I gotta go. I I could keep going. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. And uh, I'll see you next week for another Seek the Joy Tuesday.